Hello and welcome to Across Africa. I'm Georgia Calvin-Smith with our weekly look at stories from across the continent. Coming up in the programme, Madagascar has commemorated the 70th anniversary of its uprising against French rule. More than 40,000 nationals lost their lives in the colonial suppression of the insurgency. Also, South African anti-apartheid icon Ahmed Kathrada was buried after passing away aged 87. His funeral became a rally against embattled President Jacob Zuma. And camel racing is becoming an increasingly popular sport in African countries like Sudan. It's in part because of backing from rich sponsors from the UAE. But first, one of the least known massacres of French colonial history was commemorated in Madagascar on Wednesday, the 70th anniversary of the Malagasy uprising. Around 40,000 people were killed in the French settlers' war against the insurgents. It was in this quiet town of about 30,000 people, 100 kilometres east of the capital, that things took a revolutionary turn. On the 29th of March 1947, while French settlers were enjoying a Saturday night in the city, thousands of Malagasy armed with spears attacked these barracks in the dead of night. This man was 17 at the time. He was a bodyguard and carried talismans for the fighters. The memories of the raid are still fresh in his mind. We started marching slowly, in complete silence in single file, uh, armed with spears. Uh, Our bodies were hunched over, like this, slowly marching. The settlers didn't have time to prepare. They were all with their women. That's why we won. We waited for them to arrive. We were ready, and then we killed, killed, killed. The bloodshed marked the beginning of a popular uprising against forced labour and the increasingly unbearable abuse the Malagasy suffered under colonial rule. We carried the district chief, the forest guards, the officials on chairs like slaves. Imprisonment, torture and mass killings ensued. For two years the settlers violently repressed the uprising and the rebels were forced to back down. We hid in the forest overnight. If we'd lit a fire during the daytime, the planes flying overhead would have fired at us with rockets. We suffered injuries all over our bodies and our clothes were all ripped up. The Malagasy who fought for the French during the rebellion were branded traitors. Some who battled against their own people were later racked with guilt and the country still struggles with trauma caused by the uprising. 70 years later, and for many, discussing it is still taboo. In South Africa, anti-apartheid activist Ahmed Kathrada died on Tuesday, aged 87. He spent 26 years in prison, much of that alongside Nelson Mandela on the notorious Robben Island. Both were part of a group sentenced to life imprisonment in the historic Rivonia trial of 1964. Kathrada's funeral on Wednesday was overtly political, with a fiery eulogy calling out the country's leadership. President Jacob Zuma claimed that he was asked to stay away, although the Kathrada Foundation said that they told him that he just couldn't speak. Another of the defendants in the Ravonia trial spoke to France 24 about his friend's legacy. And so it's a very sad day. A brilliant life has come to an end. A close friend, a very dear comrade. I was with him a month ago, celebrating the life of Nelson Mandela, and he was very frail. Yeah. He gathered his strength oh, no, to what talk is... about what it was, led by Nelson Mandela, Oliver Tambo and others we had fought for, and to condemn those who are destroying now, in government, what we fought for. A man of courage, a man of principle, a man of integrity, a man of compassion, a man who was loved. And I shall miss him. I shall miss him. Well, gold is big business in Uganda. It exported over $200 million worth in 2015 to 2016. The country's first refinery was recently inaugurated, but very little gold is produced in Uganda. So where does it all come from? Our correspondents report. 
In this highly secure factory, about 300 kilos of gold are processed every week. The refinery is run by Belgian businessman Alain Goetz. It's a sophisticated machine which does a surface scan and which shows the content and the composition of the other metals it contains. It's the only refinery in East Africa to produce gold of this purity. 75 people are employed here, most of them Ugandans. Alex Chega used to be a plumber before working here. I took the training from here. We are the very first people who work here to make gold in Uganda. 56 kilos of gold are processed today at a value of more than $2 million. By processing gold officially and abolishing the local tax on the trade, the authorities here say they can start to eliminate the booming black market. It was a sector which was always hidden. Now, by lifting the tax, the trade is becoming legal and transparent. The gold comes from this region, but whether it's sourced from Uganda, Tanzania, or across the borders of the Democratic Republic of Congo or South Sudan, tracing its origin is extremely difficult, and regional instability makes it easier to smuggle this precious metal across Uganda's borders. More than 90 percent, I can say it comes from Congo, because uh, the production of gold in Uganda is very low. But from my side, I would get it from people uh, without even asking for documentation by government or clearances. According to a recent UN report, most of the gold which comes from the DRC is produced illegally, and it's one of the main sources of funding for the many armed groups in the region. For now, it remains almost impossible to tell who may be profiting from this lucrative trade. The discovery of rubies in Mozambique back in 2009 has attracted thousands of informal miners from across the region, along with throngs of gem dealers and traffickers. The ruby rush has led to clashes over turf. Rubies were only discovered in Mozambique in 2009 by a local woodcutter who didn't know what he'd found. Now, around 40% of rubies sold throughout the world come from the country's northern Montepuez region. Our goal is to find the gravel bed at the bottom of the river in which rubies were deposited around 500 million years ago, transported by rain and scattered among the rocks. The stones are sorted by hand by employees who are frisked several times a day. It's an incredibly lucrative business. But the discovery of rubies has been a curse for the region too. Informal miners, gem dealers and traffickers have flooded in from other parts of Mozambique and neighbouring countries, leading to inevitable clashes. Last month, police launched a major operation, arresting over 3,500 people. Many miners denounce what they describe as police brutality. This time the police came and they started shooting. Two people were hit over there in the forest. One was killed and the other is in hospital. The government is encouraging local miners to regulate their work by forming collectives. But with poverty so entrenched, many will continue to flood in from other African countries, risking their lives in the hope of finding riches. Despite having ample land for farming, Nigeria is struggling to meet local demand for coconuts. That could all change, and coconut traders are hoping to crack the sector wide open by taking advantage of government efforts to diversify the economy. Located in Nigeria's commercial capital, Lagos, Green Sprout Industries is one of many startups hoping to benefit from a boost in the country's agriculture sector. Started in 2016 by two friends, it supplies fresh coconut water to clients in Lagos, Port Harcourt and Abuja. Co-founder Ise Aigbogun says there's a huge market for coconut products in Nigeria. The last two years or so, we've seen this upsurge in coconut byproducts. We've seen coconut oils everywhere. We've seen people make um, soaps from coconut oils as well. That's only going to grow. But we have to make sure that we have enough coconuts in Nigeria to meet the demand that's out there. Coconuts are grown in the country's coastal areas, but Nigeria is yet to invest in the business. The African nation has 1.2 million hectares of arable land, but only about 36,000 hectares are cultivated. Poor infrastructure remains one of the major obstacles to boosting agriculture. 
between one billion dollars and about two point five billion dollars is what's is what's missing or what exists that we can tap into. The market is there. What we just need to do is to help stimulate production. Nigeria announced a new plan to diversify its economy earlier this year, but a lot of work still needs to be done. Agriculture accounts for less than 10% of the country's exports. Camel racing is a fast-growing sport in the Middle East and increasingly in some parts of Africa. Sudan is one of the countries developing the sport with sponsorship from the UAE. Simon Harding reports. Gearing up for the big race, Atala is tending to his camels so that they are ready to compete in a few hours. Camel racing may be a new pastime in Sudan, but it is deeply rooted in the ancestral history of the country. We have inherited the camel race from our ancestors. We don't know how long ago these races started, but it's been passed down from our ancestors until we inherited it. Before, we held these races for weddings and large events and feasts. Each of us would come with his camel, and we would race along the way. Over the centuries, camels have been used as a means of transportation, whereas horses were usually preferred for racing. However, thanks to the help of wealthy sponsors such as the United Arab Emirates, camel racing in Sudan is fast becoming a mainstream sport. In Port Sudan, we've started a federation, and there's also one in North Kordofan and in the north of the country. We plan to make sure each state has a modern racetrack and, God willing, we'll have an exchange market for camels and racing camels in Sudan. Sudan has its own particular breed of camels, considered as one of the finest in the world. Breeding and raising the animals is deeply rooted in Sudanese tradition, but it could be that the camel's worth will now be judged on its speed. Well, that's it for Across Africa for now. Thanks very much for watching us and please do so again if you can. Take care.